Hi everyone. Welcome to the second uh, pre-class session of our AI Bootcamp course. Today we are going to look into how you can develop AI for very complex disease detection such as cancer. And I'll show some real examples where it's used in the world and I will also show a simple code via which you can train this system in less than 10 minutes. So let's get started. In the second pre-class session, we are going to look into how AI is shaping future careers. Our major focus will be on healthcare. And I will also try to motivate that there are other these different fields in which AI is widely used. We will do more future session in agriculture and education as well. In healthcare, we are going to see some real examples today. AI in healthcare uh, class, this lecture is based on a recent talk which I gave at Guru Gobind Singh Medical College and Hospital Free Code. And this talk was done in the cancer department where I discussed how AI in medicine is transforming healthcare. As you see, there is a lot of response from the audience, including doctors and their students and the professors. And today we have simplified this lecture uh, for our pre-class -pre session so students can easily follow this. Before we move forward, uh, we are running artificial intelligence classes for the students, and this is for eighth class or higher. If you have not registered already, please register. And this is a nice way to learn more and get involved with us. Out of all the registered students, we have actually more than 40% uh, or so from the villages, which is amazing. We have actually around 40% from small cities or towns. And from the urban cities like Delhi, Bangalore, we have around 16%. This, we have already received hundreds of registration already. So this is kind of an amazing uh, uh, achievement and effort from all the team members. Let me touch on the future jobs and careers. Like you see that in the internet discovery or the electricity discovery, which happened in the 19th century or the fuel-based industrialization, which happened like in the late 18th century, all these discoveries have changed the future. Internet has impacted us in every way. And similarly, electricity has impacted us in every way. All the household appliances and all are now dependent on electricity. The AI change which is happening now is actually changing the same way as internet and electricity has changed us. All the jobs and careers are going to be impacted. So the future jobs will be with the people who can develop state-of-the-art AI or the people who know how to use state-of-the-art AI. And I'll show you some examples of how it's impacting doctors uh, in real world today. Okay, the second pre-class session, which is focusing on how AI is shaping future careers will be focused on the healthcare. <clears throat> In the healthcare domain, AI does three tasks. We use it to detect diseases, and based on the detection of diseases, we use it to forecast health risks. And based on disease detection and health risk, we are able to do interventions, or we are able to act. For example, AI can detect whether a person has cancer or not. Based on health risks and cancer detection, we can forecast what other risks can, does this person have? Does this person can develop diabetes in 10 years? And based on the disease detected and diabetes or risk detected, we are going to act. We are going to make changes to the person diet and patterns so that the person life can be kind of can be longer and person can kind of overcome the implications of cancer or other health risks. As you see, like these all three things kind of happen in an orderly fashion. Detection happens first, then we forecast the risk and then we act. This terminology is borrowed from MD2K Center. In the detection, AI is actually used today in the real hospitals. For example, at Ames Delhi, AI is used to detect um, cancer from real images. So this is a Nature article published in 2024 where there are more details. But what is happening is at Ames Delhi, they are using roughly 5 lakh images to train the AI. And these images are from breast and ovarian cancers. Based on these AI images, finally AI is able to learn where the patient has cancer or not. And hence, they are able to make a prediction out of it. Let us look how this actually happens in the real world. Here, I've taken real cancer data set. This is from 162 patients, which are at different stages of cancer. And this is, again, a breast cancer data set. These are images of the real breast cancer tissue. What you see, these top three images are from the patients who have cancer. And the bottom three images are normal images. So these patients are normal. They don't have cancer. Malignant means it's a positive sample, which is cancerous. Benign means that uh, it's a negative sample, non-cancer. So given these images, we want uh, an AI to learn that whether it's cancer or not. How it's working, actually. So these images are given as input to the AI model. This AI model will be trained to reduce error. Error is actually how much mistakes this AI is doing. 
We will talk in the course how you can train such a system yourself. But this is again a very powerful neural network. It's around 126K neurons or 1,26,000 neurons. This AI network is outputting whether the patient have cancer or not. We want to do this because like doctors resources are limited. If we have such an AI, it can actually help so many patients in many, many vast corners around the world. That's what we want to do. And I'll show you how you can develop these systems in, in like less than 10 minutes, actually, if you know, and if you have access to the data sets. Okay, so we will play online and see how this AI is developed. I have already created a code on the Google Cloud, and we will see how we can train such a neural network which can output cancer or non-cancer. To recap, our goal is that AI will look at the images, and based on these images, it's going to make a decision whether neural network, um, neural network will decide whether this patient have cancer or not. Okay, let's go online and see the code. So if you click on this link, it, is op it will open a notebook, which you can see here. And this notebook is actually based on a real data. So this data set is taken from Kaggle. If you don't know many of these terminologies, no need to worry, we are going to go in details, but this is a small trailer of what we are going to teach you. We are going to download this three GB of data which roughly has like, I think two lakh plus images of real patients. Uh, then we are going to, let us see how the images look like. These are the images from the real patients and these are the cancerous images of the breast cancer tissue. These are the negative samples. As you see with eyes, it's pretty hard to know actually where is cancer and where is not. But AI can be trained to do all this task very well. If you are a doctor who works with cancer, this is very easy for you. But like I am not a doctor, I'm an AI expert. Can I still develop a model to do this for me? Okay, from AI side, we are going to, for example, create training and test images. Training are the images which we use the model to learn from, test are the images on which we test the model. Again, you don't know this code yet. I'm just showing you that we will develop these things together. We have roughly two lakh images in the training and we are going to use the remaining in test. Okay, a lot of things happen, but this is how our neural networks look like. We are going to train a neural network of 1,26,000 neurons and this is the structure it has. You don't, don't know the structure yet, but convolution neurons are very much similar to how human eyes work. So this is where we are creating an artificial brain outside, which is very similar to our eyes. It has few other kind of patterns as well, and we will go into details, but finally with, with all this, <clears throat> it is able to do what we want it to do. For example, let us go ahead and try to turn this model. It is going to take uh, some time for this model to train. So let me also uh, start a uh, creation of this model. It, and then let us run the training. And the training will take roughly a few minutes. And as, as it is running, let me also explain what is happening. So we are giving training and test data to the AI. We are also telling it that we need to validate as it trains and we are going to run it for a certain time. So it is going to run 40 means that it's going to run this training of 40 steps. You can run this for hundreds of steps, but for this lecture, 40 steps are more than enough. But as you see, the training is running and AI is able to give us good accuracy. That's the learning. It's able to be 77% accurate, 82%, 83%. So as the training is going, its accuracy goes on better and better. This is how the AI is developed. There are certain steps in this. We started with the data, we did train and test split, we created the model, and now we are feeding it to the AI to learn. It's as simple as this. Uh, we will learn how these all things are created as in we go into deeper into the classes, but this is short trailer to kind of give you just a quick eye view of what is going to happen. This training will take a few minutes to run. After the model is run, we will see that actually it's around 85% accurate. It can, given an image, it can 85% accurately predict whether the patient has cancer or not. And let us see what the model does like. These are the images which model has not seen. So these are like new patients. And actually, like whenever the, there's no cancer, model is predicting there's no cancer. And when the actual there is like benign, it's saying it's benign. And when, for example, the actual is cancerous, this is a cancerous tissue, actually model is saying, oh, it's cancerous. For example, I've done it more and more time, but roughly here AI is around 85% accurate, so it can make mistakes. But overall, like you see here, it's doing very well. Like when it actually is malignant, it's cancerous, it's saying it's cancerous. Um, so in just like less than 10 minutes and so you're able to develop such a powerful AI to detect cancer from real images. Let us kind of again move to the slides. So this is kind of our goal. Given the images, we want to learn whether it's cancerous or not. And we just looked a quick peek of how to do this. Okay. Our neural network had 1,26,000 neurons and it's around 85% accurate. How you can develop these systems are what we are going to train in the classes. As you see here, this is not hard to do, but you need to know the tricks. You need to know how to create the models, how to process the data and so on. Okay, 
Again, we saw the results from our AI models are quite accurate, which we earlier looked into the past slides. So <clears throat> detection is easy, like we saw. Prediction is even harder. Can we forecast health risks? So this is another article from the BBC News, which just uh, was just a few days old, 26 December 2024, where you see that AI is actually in a trial run in two diabetes hospitals, actually. They are trying to predict uh, type 2 diabetes risk, and this is trial run happening in two different hospitals in the London. Uh, but the problem is they are trying to predict type 2 diabetes 10 years in advance. So before you even have it, AI can actually predict that can you get diabetes or not, and this system is roughly 70% accurate. So you see how amazing it is. Before you get diabetes, 10 years in advance, it can tell you that you may get it. So you need to change your lifestyle now. And this is the trial run of system happening today. Maybe next few years, you will see this system trial run happening in India as well. How can you intervene? This is intervention example from an American hospital where AI is used uh, for the patients uh, which have actually, again, cancer, which are near their end of life. So we want to cut down on the chemotherapies or unnecessary treatments for the cancer based on different AI predictions. And AI models actually identify the cancer patient with high risk, and we are able to intervene and act based on these insights. In this case, they are able to help hospitals and save a different uh, kind of patients from spending on cancer treatments which are not needed. So these examples are also happening in the real hospitals today. Uh, so based on all these examples, I think the most important question to ask is, are we going to replace doctors? Uh, so are these nurses, which are kind of today working, will they be no more in the next few years? So th this is a real protest happening in California, where you see actually the patients, uh, like the nurses of the hospitals are holding these placards and saying, trust nurses, not AI, but algorithms are not patients and so on. What is happening is that slowly, slowly AI is entering in the hospital world and there is a lot of questions, which are like ethical consideration, public perception, algorithmic bias. So whether you want AI to treat you or you want a real human doctor to treat you, all these are open questions. My understanding is that AI is, AI is going to be a wonderful assistant to all of doctors. Uh, they don't need to remember any kind of uh, complex things because AI will give them on their fingertips. Uh, this kind of change is going to happen soon. Uh, this is one of the pre-class session, which was short recap of how AI is impacting healthcare. We will cover more sessions on how it is impacting agriculture or education in the future, again, to highlight uh, how AI is used in all of these amazing things. Let me give a very small summary of AI in education. If you look at many of these companies which exist, uh, which are using AI in education, and what actually is happening is that given like student responses, AI can even grade it. So... If you kind of give a mark sheet to mark sheets of students to AI, for example, you can ask a question, what is gravity? And these are three different students answering it in three different ways. Gravity is something that keeps us on the ground. Gravity is a force and then much better answer. If you give it to AI, it can actually kind of say that, okay, out of 10 marks, first student gets six, second student gets eight, and the last can say nine. And it also can give a feedback and, and all that to students that what is missing and what needs to be improved. This In this one, I am not using GPT, actually. This AI is developed by us itself. So I have deployed a custom model to answer this. We will also see how you can do these kind of things. So basically, whether they are doctors or teachers, AI is going to impact them a lot. The future is very kind of near us. And through these classes, again, my goal is to kind of introduce you all of these use cases of AI as well. OK, again, let us stop here. So this is just a short trailer. I'll again recommend all of you, if you're not registered, please register for the classes. We are going to learn all these fun things with uh, all of us together. And thanks for your time. And I will see you again in some another video.